Hi, this is Steve KF4KNF with the North Jeffco Amateur Radio League. And today I wanted to show you a radio that I built. Uh, it's actually the MRX40, which is an extremely small receiver that can be used for QRP work. So it is just a receiver. Uh, you can pair this up with the uh, Micronaut CW transmitter or also the Tuna 10 uh, transmitter that you can find out on the web. So a couple of things I wanted to show you today. Um, of course, we've got this built on a uh, little uh, breadboard here. And uh, let's just start with some of the basics. We've got the antenna over here on the left-hand side. Right now it's just hooked into a wire antenna. Over here on the right-hand side, we've got the, the power leads. And this is actually being supplied with 9 volts. Uh, you could power this with a 9-volt battery or you can build your own power supply for it but uh, it is set up where you can run this mobile in true QRP fashion so uh, a quick look at a couple of the major components here let's start right here in the middle I'll zoom in so you can see these a bit better alright and this guy here is actually an SA 612 AN IC. Now the tip's rather hard to find. You can actually find it on eBay or I believe the uh, Mauser uh, supplier online has just started carrying it again. But that's a uh, double balanced uh, mixer chip. So essentially what it's doing is it's taking the input from your antenna on the right hand side and it's combining it with your local oscillator which is uh, a crystal here that's set up for uh, the 40 meter band so 7 megahertz now the output from that IC the oscillator mixer uh, together is actually outputted to this uh, LM380N now that is actually an audio amplifier this particular one has 14 pins. Keep in mind that that 380 uh, also comes in a smaller 8-pin package if you want to use it. The only uh, real thing to note on this is if you get the larger 14-pin package, several of these leads um, in the center are actually not used. They're just strictly for grounding. So as you can see, there's the yellow um, wires there. Those are, those are going straight to ground. So, um, we also have uh, a couple of other things here that are kind of interesting with this particular radio. Over here on the left hand side, we've got a 10K variable resistor, which is actually controlling the gain from the antenna. Now, this is actually working uh, to control the volume. Uh, so, as you're using your headphones, by adjusting this, you can control the volume that you're actually hearing signals at. Now up on the top side here, this is actually your tuning and what that's doing is there's actually a diode here as you can see at the very end of the, the pin. There's a diode. Um, it's actually pulling this diode in a way that, that allows you to tune around slightly. So even though your, your crystal here is operating at a set frequency, by varying this uh, variable resistor you can actually tune around about one and a half uh, kilobytes, or excuse me, kilohertz, <laughs> and uh, from there you can control your tuning a bit. So if somebody is trying to talk to you and they're slightly off frequency, you can compensate a bit with that. So uh, continuing on here, after the uh, signal comes out of your audio amplifier, uh, this this red wire here is actually uh, going over to uh, the jack. You can't see it; it's just out of the picture here where I've got just standard headphones hooked up. That's the uh, same headphones you'd use for, say, an iPod or a Walkman or whatever. Now, even though it's only operating on 9 volts, uh, the audio output on this is actually uh, pretty amazing. It's, it's very strong. You could hook it into a speaker if you'd like. But um, uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll power it on here and give you a quick demonstration.
Okay, so what we've got here is just off to the, the out of your view. I've got an ICOM radio. It's actually set up on the uh, similar frequency as the crystal that's in our in our radio here. So um, it is set up for CW. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send a, a series of uh, CW uh, tones so that you can hear it on the radio. We'll go ahead and turn the radio on. And I'll put this up by the camera so you can actually hear it. I'm sure you can hear the static there. So I'm actually going to go ahead and transmit and let's listen in and see what we can hear. Okay, so we're almost on frequency. Let's actually tune the radio around just slightly and see what happens with the tone. Now as you can hear there, the signal sounds a little distorted, so uh, we're actually going to back off on the antenna gain a little bit here. And once more we'll tune around a little so you can hear the difference in tone as we vary uh, the frequency slightly. Okay, so there was a quick demonstration. Now, one other thing to keep in mind about this radio is it's called the MRX40, but it can actually operate on 80 meters as well. Now, what that would require, though, is that you change a couple of things in your circuit. The first thing is you obviously would want a uh, crystal here that is set for the correct uh, band, so the 80 meter band. You'd also need to change out these guys right here and right here. So these two items are actually your uh, inductors. So uh, right now they're of course set up for 40 meters but you can uh, change those out um, for the 80 meter band. There's actually a uh, document that you can pull up that gives you the exact uh, um, inductance readings that you would need. Um, it's actually in the more QRP power book that you can get from the ARRL. Now of course by changing those you would also need to change your capacitance um, on your, your tank circuit here. So uh, again those those values can be looked up in the book or if you want to calculate your own. So hopefully uh, that gives you some information on this receiver. Uh, some future upgrades that I hope to have uh, include a, a frequency display using a PIC chip um, that would be nice to have on here. Not normally something you'd see on a QRP rig, but using a, a PIC chip, which is fairly low power, I think we could make that work, and it shouldn't impact the battery life uh, of your 9 volt too much. So, uh, with that, I'll say 73s uh, from KF4KNF.